So in your case, you mm-hmm. were born without your lower right leg right. and missing fingers. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so that was your reality growing up in Brazil. Did Absolutely. You, you, were your parents like, hey, listen, everybody's got different issues. Just mm-hmm. deal with it. We'll deal with it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly what they said. You know, my entire life, they really uh, put me in, to the test. Like, you know, you, I'm going to figure it out, you know, yes. what I can do and how I can do things and how to adapt to, to the environment around me and the, the sports that I can, I'm capable to do. And, and uh, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Donation. We like that. <laughs> and uh, so swimming was your first sport? Swimming was my very first uh, comp- com- like competition yes. um, sports. Uh, I really got involved into trying to, to the Paralympic Games very right. quickly. Uh, well, my very first sport was mountain biking. So, like I started ah. back in '92. Uh, that was back back when the like the cantilever brakes, yes, uh, you know, and uh, heavier bikes were uh, still in the market. And so I had a great time mountain biking for a straight seven to eight years. And uh, when I f- when I discovered swimming. Um, I, I started really to focus focus on, on on the swimming aspect and trying the Olympic Games, and it was a very quick progress because I had that background as yes. a mountain biker, and so I had the cardio and endurance right. built, and uh, it was like like that to be competitive in the in the sport of swimming. Did you have to adapt the mountain bike for for your for your hand? Not for my hands, just uh, just to be creative on, with my foot, my yeah. my prosthetic foot, and yeah. uh, I just created like a like a, a great attachment, like a straight to the pedal yes. type. Yeah, without who any, needs a shoe? You don't need yeah, a shoe. Yeah, so that's the only adapt uh, adaptation I did. I did so. And then you ended up. Uh, so you're on the Paralympic swim team. I was with the Brazilian team for eight years, eight straight years. Yeah. So did you go to Paralympics? I did not made it. I oh. I tried I try Athens 2004 and then pe- pe- Beijing yes. 2008, and uh, I had the time, the qualifying time to go at the 50s and 100 meter freestyles. Yes. I was really yeah. I was I was I made it to top top 10 on the world ranking, um, but I, the it was just competitive, very competitive. Right. I mean, we had like 40. Five plus uh, swimmers with time to go at only, you know, twenty spots. Uh, Which is a on good the team. thing. It, it is. It's, it's competition. It's, it's, it's yeah, competition. Yeah, it's competition. Yeah, I remember yeah. when Rudy first started? Yeah. There were very few double amputees around, so trying to get Paralympics to accept that division. Yep. It, until you got a certain number of athletes, certain number of countries, so you sort of need the competition. Absolutely, it is what it is. Yes. You know? um, uh, the, I think the great thing of uh, that experience was just being able to really test how far I could go on the yes. sport. And uh, I also got to travel and, and swim in many countries and right. meet a lot of friends. Um, that was actually the introduction for triathlons. So as being a swimmer, I believe it's, it's easier oh, to start in triathlon. So for me, it was, it was like a joke, you know, the, the swimming part. Yeah, you're I, like, I don't, oh, don't, don't want to be just, like, yeah. It's a drop in a bucket. It was yeah. easy because we used to swim like, you know, thousands oh. and thousands and thousands a day. Five, six thousand yards a day. Um, so so the, the, the water, open water was fun. It was always, always the fun part. And... Um, and then I had to improve, of course, biking and running was the biggest all time, like most challenging part for me is the running. It's still to these days. Yes. That's the part that I need to imp- really improve. And, and how much has the equipment changed in terms of running, in terms of your pr- lower leg right. prosthetics? Um, I mean, I, uh, first, very first time I started running was late in life. That was when I, I had the opportunity to meet the Challenge Athlete Foundation. And uh, yes. I was, when was that? assisted in, that was 2005. So. I think the grant was in 2004, and, okay. then, I, and then I the grant was, I was granted in 2005 with the first my first uh, running leg, right? First running foot, yeah. What a diff- what type of difference was yeah, that? Yeah, I was 25, so it was very late in life. Yes. I consider that. Yeah, uh, it was amazing. I mean, it was it, it blew my mind how great of an experience it is to just fly. You know, <laughs> it was really like I felt like I was flying. I was like, what kind of speed is, is that? You know, fair? is this fair? Yeah, what am, am I doing am, here? Am I running a bike or something? I'm so going so fast because I, I didn't have that in my brain. Like right. that, I didn't process that um, experience before. So it was a, such a great feeling, and I that was I was hooked. Okay, I I want to go and do triathlons and explore my you know how far how fast I can go around running. And until to these days, I'm re- really focusing on Xterras and off-road triathlons. It's my really biggest like race yes. right now uh, to be focusing on. What's your best race ever? My best race ever. For you, the <sighs> one that means the most to you. I think in terms of challenging myself, yeah. it's big time Xterras. Um, because like the world championships. Yes, like because there is, a, a, there is the challenging element. Um, uh, because it, it's not only it, it's much more than, than than just go and ride your bike and running. Right. It's it's really requires like an, an additional set of set of skills, 
uh, that you're going to improve that over time. It's not something that just you just no. get it. Um, so it's a, it's a really exploring uh, another a whole other level of, of sets of skills for my for me. So Reed, yeah, I consider Xterra the biggest uh, challenge for me right now. Ironman Brazil 2007. Yeah, do Ironman. It, do it in Ironman. Yeah. Doing it in your home country. How special yeah. was that? Yeah, the first Ironman 2007 was uh, it was mind blowing. Also, I. You know, when my big friend uh, Fabio Maia, he yes. invited me for that race, it was completely out of my my bucket list. Like, okay, no, that's the way I can do this. I was not even running ten, a 10K, right. you know, for that race. Yeah, yeah. And I had made a decision like a couple months before the race, only running not even 10K. So yes. I was like, oh, I can't believe it. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to run a full marathon after, you know, biking and everything. So... But again, you know, it, it was the, he offered me the opportunity, and as why well, say no? I mean, exactly. the worst case scenario, I walk, or worst case scenario, I just don't complete. But at least I tried, you know. Yes. So I decided to go for it, and I completed. Uh, it was like fourteen hours, fourteen fifty. Yeah. Um, half of that, the, that entire time was just running. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was like seven plus hours running. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, again, the swim swim was great. Bike was was fun. Um, Run sec- was the brutal. second the second loop was kind of brutal as well on the bike, and then the run was walking and ro- walking and running all the time. <laughs> and then you do Kona, which is the uh, the pinnacle of triathlon. Absolutely, in yeah. 2011. Yeah, that's 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 what I consider for my uh, my Ironman goals was the having the uh, world championship as an as, a, as an experience. I really got to feel what what everybody out there go, yes. goes through. You know, it's just the same you know challenge for everybody, and uh, yeah, it's not just a race. You can just no. just do, go go ahead and do it. You got to really plan ahead of time, and there's the additional challenge of the heat and the loneliness of kind of you know going back on that yes. bike course, and then on on the running, you know, it, it gets night, and you feel <laughs> so lonely out there. And <laughs> so yes, yeah, it's, it's it was a great a great event for sure. Yeah. So uh, there's a, obviously a lot of challenge athletes mm-hmm. in Brazil and a mm-hmm. lot of challenge athletes in the States. How mm-hmm. important is it for you to be there for that next generation? For, you know, CF mm-hmm. was there for you and your mm-hmm. parents were there for you basically saying, hey, you're the same yeah. as everybody else. Yeah. Is that an important thing for you as well? The inspirational aspect, you, you I think well, I that's or, a question, or right? when yeah. people, I'm sure you, people reach out to you. They mm-hmm. see you at a race, mm-hmm. or they say, yeah. hey, I've got a cousin, and yeah. can he talk oh, yeah. to you? That's, that, I'm sure that happens every day. Yeah, that, this is actually a, a common, um, great experience for all of us. Uh, uh, you know, we are out there, and we are a small population, you yes. know, to consider. So it's, it's very typical for someone to be just curious and knowing what are, what are we doing and what kind of equipment we, we use. Yes. Uh, it's just the educational aspect of that entire world that they're not into it on a daily basis. So uh, for me, it's a, always a pleasure to educate them about it. And, I love it. And then I also always share, you know, um, I know you guys should get, get together with Challenge Athlete Foundation and see, you know, how they can possibly help you guys. And... Yeah, so it's it's always great to, to share what we're doing and how normal we are. <laughs> everybody's the same. Yeah, yeah. It's everybody yeah. just wants to be. And how important is sport yeah. for someone who's dealing with a challenge? Because it's, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we talk about sport. Sometimes people think sport is sort of frivolous. It's mm-hmm. just it's a hobby. And I'm like, no, sport is it's really important to your self esteem for you feeling good about yourself. You know, I think sports it's a, it's like a health insurance. That's you a very know, good point. If you don't, if you don't have health insurance, you, you, you know, if something happens, you know, you, get, you start getting concerned, right? So that's what I consider. If we don't have sports, if something happened, like in, meaning by you know, the, on a cha- the challenging, the challenge like daily basis, yes. like the life, you know, gets in the way, and, and we have the sport to go there and feel good about ourselves. So it's I consider that as like a health, like a health insurance that we have to have to have that. I love that. What, yeah, so that's for everyone. Now you're a dad. <laughs> you got two little ones. Yeah. What, what's next? athletically you have some goals coming up absolutely so uh, i was talking about xteros yes uh, i believe that that will be my sport for the rest of my life as long as, long as i can can have that health yes. insurance yes yes uh, i will uh, be competing on the xteros i think i think i can go much much further and i can see i have a sense that that that's uh, that's the that's the sport where we will see a lot of other amputees other uh, challenge athletes uh, competing yes um, this year was already a, a, i think it was a world, world record yes. uh, of challenge athletes on that race I believe next year will be even more now that the the Olympics are gone or right. over. Yes, I believe there's a lot of like high end athletes, really well trained, uh, kind of target targeting that race right now. It'd be interesting uh, to see the Paralympics take a look at yeah. off road triathlon. That seems like a perfect fit. Yeah, I mean they have the cross. They cross, have the cross yeah, nationals, yeah, right? Yeah, cross yeah. worlds. 
um, yeah, we just need more people out there, and uh, the more people we have on that race, the better. More competition for us, the more, the more we can improve and really reaching new new limits for ourselves. Are you surfing race. too? We are surfing in two, three weeks. Yeah, in less than three weeks. Yeah, I'll you, be surfing. Yeah. You're, you're going for a national championship. I will. Or? Yeah, yeah. I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'll be representing uh, Brazil, and um, I was there last year. Yes. Um, that's another thing. I mean, I, th I believe there's technology that can be implemented into surfing. I yes. think we can. We there's like room for, for technology years, did you, for improvement. Did you surf without a leg? I surf with my leg. Yeah. You yeah. surf with the leg now, yeah, yeah. but back in the day. I also I also started like late in life with surfing. Yes. Uh, that was actually when I met my my wife, yes. 2007. Yeah, yeah. that's when, when I started surfing. And uh, we can go even further. We can we can improve our surf. We can do some new tricks. I believe you know. The sky's uh, the limit. I, the sky's the limit. Yep. Love it, Andre. Yeah. Thanks so much for yeah. everything you do for CAF. Yeah, thank Wonderful you. Wonderful to have you part of I, us. I thank CAF for everything, and uh, I'm just on this. Thanks to you guys. So thank you so much.